afternoon and welcome to another edition of the Valley Today. I'm Mario Retrosi. It is Thursday and lo and behold, I see sunshine. A beautiful day in the northern Shenandoah Valley. Still cold though. Temperatures is barely above freezing. But that will help the uh, VDOT and town crews plow streets. Got an interesting program for you today. Very informative, I think. I'm joined by my good friend Mark Quintz. He is a special agent with the Virginia State Police, the Bureau of Criminal Investigations, High Tech Criminal Division. That's a mouthful. How you doing, Mark? Doing great, Mario. Good to be here. Thanks. Thanks for having us. Very interesting. Your Bureau of uh, Criminal Investigation, High Tech Crime Division. So when I think high tech, I'm thinking uh, you deal with cell phones, internet, internet crimes, and things like that. And we were just talking before we went on the air about how fast and how furious internet crime has become. Well, it's become so big that um, you know a new division was formed in the state police uh, August 1st of this year to address so many complaints and criminal investigations we've had, uh, specifically directed toward uh, high technology crime, whether it be cellular phones, internet hacking. Anything basically involving technology where criminal activity ta- is taking place. All right. So what is the biggest high-tech problem nowadays? Well, probably the biggest right now, at least that we're getting the most inquiries about, is probably children getting in and, and forming social networking sites and putting so much information out there and opening it up to the world that, you know, there's some unscrupulous people um, paying kids a visit, adults and And maybe not even adults, but bullies and and other folks that are really unwanted by the folks. And a lot of it's because of uh, the fact that the parents aren't monitoring monitoring the sites. Facebook, you're talking about the social networks, Facebook, MySpace, things like that. Yeah, and there's so many of them out there. You know, if you you just did a search of the social networking site, there's hundreds. But you name the two biggest, Facebook and MySpace. All right. So let's start with Internet crime. and, And we'll start with kids first. What are some of the things that kids are doing now on the Internet? Well, uh, you know, obviously the Facebook pages and the MySpace pages have become an, an all-in-one tool for these kids as far as communication. Uh, they're able to use them through their iPhones or their, their PDAs or whatever devices they're using in combination of cellular phones and uh, being able to get the Internet, uh, their Blackberries and whatnot. So a lot of communication is done via the, right via the social networking sites. So with that, a lot of material is getting put on there that identifies them to the rest of the world. And like anything else, I mean, if you leave your information out there for anyone to peruse, sooner or later, the wrong person is going to get a hold of it. Now, when first thing that came to my mind when we were talking about coming on and talking about Internet crime, I'm thinking, especially protecting kids, is the chat rooms where you get into a chat room, you start chatting with somebody, and... Sometimes may they may not seem who they may not be who they seem they are. Yes, and that's become a real obvious thing for a lot of folks. If you've seen the Dateline uh, to catch a predator and things like that, which a lot of people have by now, obviously there's a lot of that that goes on. Um, and and there are still quite a few investigations where that happens, where there are younger adults that are still children under the age of 18 by by the law um, that are going into regular chat rooms with adults and interacting with them to the point where. Um, they can be breaking the law. And obviously, if uh, sex is involved in jo- involving a minor, the, the court system and Commonwealth attorney's offices are finding it um, very, very prevalent, and they're, they're aggressive about handling it. You know, it's kind of scary, too, to know that people will drive through states, several states, to be with somebody thinking they are being with that particular person. Right, and to catch a predator, I think, showed just how really crazy some of it is. Uh some of what they saw on, on the Catch a Predator w- w- is, is what we've actually seen in person ourselves. So that's not far-fetched at all. How big of a problem is this? I know it's big enough, I guess, put it in layman's terms, because if it's big enough for the state, state police to open its own special division, it's got to be pretty big. Yeah, and it's, it's a big problem. And I'll tell you, because what comes along with that, obviously, and this speaking of cell phone cameras and whatnot, is is, is child pornography. It's It's... Uh, images of children depicted in in horrible situations where they're actually victims of crimes and what happens is a lot of these pictures are taken and they're sent out and once once they're released once they're out in the public domain and the internet they're out there forever and um, you know until it's your child or, or until it's someone that you know or love or neighbor who becomes a victim of that you don't realize just how bad it is because there's no pulling it back 
and the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children, which we're fortunate to have a great relationship with, and they're based in Alexandria, they do the clearinghouse for that. And, and their number of images that they see has grown. It's unbelievable. And a lot of it is because they're not just unscrupulous. They're, they're kids taking pictures of themselves in their bathrooms and coming out of their showers and that kind of thing, and they're being sent throughout you know, the, the social networking sites. And you, you mentioned Facebook and um, in MySpace as the social. Another thing is YouTube. It seems like everybody now that wants their 15 minutes of fame does something and, and puts it on YouTube out there. Yeah, there's become a lot of the, uh, the Johnny Knoxvilles and Steve O's and those people doing all that kind of craziness. And then there's a lot of the other folks that are just doing things out here that are illegal. Uh, photographing themselves in illegal activity and posting them. There's been a number of cases made based on that, of robberies and, and just craziness uh, that people are looking for their 10 minutes of 15 minutes of fame. Now, uh, as far as kids go, I, I think perhaps the best way, maybe even the only way, is parents really have to be involved in this. Absolutely. There's no, there's nothing that the 10 of us basic originals in the high-tech crime division covering the whole state of Virginia are going to be able to do to protect everyone. Obviously, it, it's like carrying around one fire hose to, to do a 15-state area. It's not going to work. Um, and the parents just got to you just got to follow some real basic principles about being a parent. Put your computer in a common area. Don't let your kids have the computers in their room where they can be on it at 2, 3 o'clock in the morning because kids are going to be kids, and they don't really know the dangers. Parents do know the dangers, and they need to protect their children from that. Some real smart principles are just to, to keep your computers in a common area, to not let your kids have their own accounts on those computers or on their cell phones, and to monitor all the information on it. All right. And then, of course, you know, you, we, you were talking about, um, uh, before we went on, you made a good analogy of you wouldn't give, you know, your 12-year-old keys to the car, so you're going to, you know, let them roam around free on the Internet all night. Exactly. And, and it's the same thing. I mean... Um, that seems like an obvious thing to say, well, of course not. I'm not going to let my 14, 13, 12-year-old child have the keys to the car. They they could be in danger. Mm -hmm. Well, let me tell you something. When you have some stranger knocking at your door or trying to get in your house at 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning, and then you start looking back like we have before in cases, and you see months and months and months of interaction between an adult and a child, um, the parents wish they had monitored them then. So, you know... Uh, an ounce of prevention is certainly worth a pound of cure when it comes to monitoring what your kids are doing with their technology. All right, and of course, some of that technology also includes the cell phone. Now, you know, kids, you know, parents will give kids the cell phone, and for good reason. I mean, they want to stay in touch with their kid, but I guess they got to stay on top of what they're doing with that cell phone. Yeah, and there's so many um, applications and so much that can be done now with with the cell phone that couldn't even be done on a laptop or a or a, really a, a full PC ten years ago. It's amazing. I mean, you can walk around and get the Internet. You can text message. You can do just about the same thing you can do on a laptop on a lot of these devices now, including cameras, including all of that kind of stuff that kids just are running free with, unless the parents are monitoring it. And they need to stay in touch with uh, parental controls with their Internet or with their service providers, whoever that might be, so that they can monitor what's going on there as well. Very good. Mark Quince is with the Virginia State Police. He's a special agent in the Bureau of Criminal Investigations, High Tech Crime Division. When we come back, we'll talk more about keeping your kids safe on the Internet and other high-tech devices on today's edition of the Valley Today. And we're back right after this. Hello, this is Seth Alcorn, pastor at the Rivermont Baptist Church. I would like to invite you to come out and be with us in our services this Sunday. We are located off of 619 on Catlett Mountain Road. Our Sunday services are at 10 a.m., 11 a.m., and 6.30 p.m. We're not a perfect church, but if you're looking for a church that preaches the Word of God and has Christ-honoring music, come and give us a visit. Also, listen to us here on the River 95.3 for the Sunday Morning Miracles broadcast, 8.30 Sunday morning. May the Lord bless you is our prayer. Nothing makes the workday flow faster like a tropical timeout at work from Tropical Smoothie Cafe in Winchester. Log on to the River953online.com and click on the Tropical Smoothie banner ad. Then listen for your workplace to be announced Thursday at 6.40 a.m. On Friday, the wedding business gets smoothies and sandwiches from Tropical Smoothie Cafe in the Rutherford Crossing, Winchester. Eat better, feel better while you work with a tropical timeout from Tropical Smoothie Cafe in Winchester and the River 95.3. This is 
Glenn Fry. The Eagles have been on tour all over the world, and it's always good to come back home. You should know that the rules for crossing the border are changing. And we want all of you who cross the border for business or for fun to be sure to have everything you need to get home efficiently. You can learn about your document options under the Western Hemisphere Travel Initiative by visiting www.getyouhome.gov. Travel safe, have fun, and take it easy. Oh, we got it easy. You're listening to The Valley Today on WZRV-FM. Hey, this is Randy Woodward inviting you to join the Wake Up Crew. Weekday mornings, 5 until 9. Winning fun, your greatest chance is what we're all about, plus award-winning information. So join us on the next Randy and the Wake Up Crew on the River 95.3 and the River 953online.com. Mostly sunny and breezy with a high of 35 this afternoon, partly cloudy with diminishing winds tonight, a low of 18. And for Friday, mostly sunny, a high of 34. Saturday, partly sunny and 35. And then on Sunday, an upper-level low moves in. That will give us increasing cloudiness with a high of 34. Could see some snow developing Sunday night. Looks like we might see another low-pressure system form off the coast on Monday. That, too, could bring us a chance of snow with a high of 34 degrees. Stay tuned. We'll have more about that later. Kemp Miller for the News at Noon. Thank you very much, Kemp. Taking a look at temperatures around the area, 35 degrees in Winchester, it's 35 degrees in Berryville, 36 degrees in Strasburg, 37 degrees in Front Royal. Reminder to stay tuned tomorrow, an interesting program for you, we'll have Megan Carey. She is a Shenandoah County native who aspires to be a country music star. She went to Nashville and recorded a CD, she'll bring that CD, so we'll... Listen to some of her music, talk about her career. Megan Carey, our guest tomorrow on The Valley Today. Reminder that if you missed a portion of today's show or want to hear it again, log on to the River953online.com, click on the podcast, click on today's date. You'll be able to hear the program also if you missed the news at noon earlier in the hour. Log on to the River 953, continue to get updates on street cleaning. We had Terry Seal, Director of Public Works of Front Royal, also Steve Burke, Director of Environmental Services, updating us on the streets. Uh, you drove in uh, from Winchester. Uh, how are how are the roads? Uh, the ro- the uh, roads are getting a lot better, Mario. I'm so, I was really <laughs> surprised with the old sun's helping it today, but you know, there's still spots where you had four or five inches of snow packed into ice and and the drifting. So, um, and I know there's a lot of roads in Frederick County and some in Warren, probably up toward Linden, that are probably still closed. impassable. Yep. So, uh, yeah, be careful coming in if you're if you're moving out and about. All right, Mark is with the Virginia State Police. He's a special <coughs> agent, Bureau of Criminal Investigations, High Tech Crime Division. Uh, you're about to celebrate what your silver anniversary with Virginia State Police. Yeah, 25 years in four days. So. How about that? That's. Uh, and you started. Uh, I guess like all the other troopers patrolling the roads, the highways, and the byways. Yeah, I went to the State Police Academy, went to Northern Virginia, worked uh, Fairfax County for uh, two and a half years before coming to uh, this area. And I've been uh, here since 1988. Of course, I lived here before that, and uh, it's been a uh, been a fast 25 years. It has been. I remember you, you worked, I think, with, when they built the new um, trucks, the weight scales in Stephen City. You yeah, worked I worked motor that. carrier safety. Yeah, I worked motor carrier safety uh, and has, has, has hazardous material enforcement for uh, for 13 years. So, yeah, I've been in this area a long time now. And now you're in charge of high-tech crime. How would you describe what you're doing now as opposed to what you've done the previous 20-plus years? Well, you know, I, I'm in a profession where it's nice to know that you say that you you intend each day to make a difference, uh, hopefully in a good way. Um, this is uh, completely different. Uh, it's growing. It, it evolves much faster than anything else I've ever done because, obviously, technology has changed, and it's continuing to change. I mean, look at how radio is and television is compared to even 10 years ago. And technology is changing, and, and it, it's like anything else. Sometimes uh, the criminal justice system stays behind the curve, and uh, implementing laws and regulations and and just making it uh, so law enforcement can keep up with some of the trends that are going on. I mean, who you wouldn't have, you wouldn't have needed uh, an internet crime division 
or a high tech crime division thirty years ago because there were none. Right, <laughs> and maybe even ten, you know, as, as late as ten years ago. Right, it's really evolved the last ten or fifteen years with the the internet and what you can do with phones now. I remember, you know, you had that big, huge monstrosity of a you know a cell phone or a car phone. Now it's like two inches long, and it's amazing what you can do with that little piece of equipment. Yeah, it's quite incredible, and you know, and and, and with so many applications now, with the folks that do have the uh, the Apple iPhones and some of those things, it's. Um, it's really incredible what they're able to do. Now, here's the thing. And when they're first and when they're first come out with things, they, and for the most part they have good intentions, but uh, you know, with everything else, you know, some people get their hands on things and say, "Hey, I can take advantage of the system and I can do personal game whether it be legal or illegal." That's right. And and it, it and it happens obviously, you know, we worry about uh, the hackers and Obviously, it's been in the news here quite frequently lately about uh, the Google hacks that have happened out of China and some things like that. And, and obviously, there's a lot of federal agencies that are watching some of the international traffic of, of, uh, of the data that's coming in and out of the country. And obviously, our financial institutions are really vulnerable for, for many reasons because so much is done electronically through the Federal Reserve and, and everyone else. And... Those people, i, I got to give them their due. They have some very, very great people um, sitting there kind of watching the traffic. And, and really the financial institutions in the banking world are doing a great job of, uh, of watching the trends and, and protecting even Internet banking and that that, that you and I may do. So I, I, my, my hat's off to them. They're, they're really doing a good job of keeping up with it. Because can you p- put a finger on how many people are trying to hack into, say, financial institutions, credit card institutions to try to get people's credit card numbers and, and things like that? Well, the, the, the difficult part is not necessarily the, the number of people doing it, but there's so many automated tools that are doing it for them. Um, you know, they can write some scripts and some programming language and some code and just bombard Internet, email. Everybody knows by now what spam is. Um, and, and they don't have to be successful that many times. If you send out a million emails hoping that a couple people launch uh, some kind of malicious code by clicking uh, a link in an email or by opening an attachment, you know, if you're, if you're successful, even a half of a percent out of a million, that's a pretty good number. That's 50,000. You can make a quick haul uh, with a very low risk of getting caught and a, and a very, very easy way of doing it. And and that's why there's a lot of the internet service providers and a lot of these folks are doing a lot better job than they've once did is, is monitoring that. All right, and of course, again, and the <coughs> thing about it, the best way to do it to prevent yourself from being a victim of crime is you, you just got to stay on top of it. You just got to watch everything like a hawk. Yeah, exactly. It's um, you know, it's like the uh, it's like the the car industry and whatnot. When they start finding out that they have some flaws and things, there's recalls, and you know when. When you see that your your children, if they're using the Internet or their phones or whatever, are doing something that's not quite right, well, you, you need to look into it because the problem is probably far greater than you realize. You know, I did a, I did a presentation not too awful long ago where it was all parents, and I asked them, how many of you have, have actively looked at your child's Facebook page today? And less than half had. A lot can happen in today's time, especially as much goes on in these uh, social networking sites that uh, they need to stay on top of it every day if you're going to allow your child to have it. Especially if they have a Facebook page, become their friend on Facebook. So exactly. You, you can monitor what they're doing and what they're saying and, yep. and all that. Mark Quince with the Virginia State Police. He is the special agent in charge of the Bureau of Criminal Investigation's High Tech Division. When we come back, we'll wrap up today's edition of the Valley Today right after this. Every one of us, at one time or another, need help to make life easier. Whether you're a weakened warrior, developed arthritis as you've gotten a little older, or find yourself having to reach for your glasses just to read that menu, at Simple Comforts in the Apple Blossom Mall, you'll find hundreds of items that help to make everyday life easier and more comfortable. From ergonomic gardening tools, magnifiers, hot and cold therapy wraps, kitchen gadgets, and more. For Valentine's Day, stop by Simple Comforts in the Apple Blossom Mall and find that perfect gift for someone you love. 
Golden Living Center Rose Hill has dedicated staff and therapists to provide exceptional short-term rehab and long-term care for your pathway to independence. The physical, occupational, and speech therapists at Golden Living Center Rose Hill work hard to get you home as soon as possible. Golden Living Center Rose Hill is certified by Medicare and Medicaid and also work with most private insurance companies. Semi-private rooms are currently available. Call Golden Living Center Rose Hill today at 955-9995. That's 955-9995. What shape are your kids in? Campbell's Kids Soups in fun shapes like Double Noodle and Chicken and Stars can help them grow up healthy and happy. All 12 varieties add a natural sea salt for a healthy level of sodium with zero grams of trans fats and a taste kids love. Campbell's Kids Soups are part of a healthy lunch you can both feel great about. Now make lunch even more fun with SpongeBob, Patrick, and all their favorite characters in new Campbell's SpongeBob Soup. So many, many Babies are really incredible. It's also incredible how much stuff they need. So it's a good thing Walmart's having a February Baby Days event with unbelievable low prices on top-rated baby brands. Right now, you can get 23.2-ounce Similac Advance Early Shield Powder Formula for just $21. Parents' Choice 72-count baby wipes for $1.97. And Huggies and Pampers Big Boxes of Diapers for $25 at participating stores while supplies last and at Walmart.com. Formula not available at Walmart.com. See store for details. Save money. Live better. Walmart. The Valley Today continues on WZRV-FM. Welcome back to the program. We have just a few moments left with Mark Quince, with the Virginia State Police, Special Agent, and the Bureau of Criminal Investigation's High Tech Crime Division, talking about Internet safety and uh, keeping your kids safe. You were talking before we went on the air. You did a talk over to high school recently. Yeah, it's an, it's an interesting fact that you know, when parents get together and, and, and they're, they're interested, they come out in the evening and they're interested in, well, you know, what, what is it that I can do with the Internet? Mm-hmm. You know, most of the parents my age, there was no Internet, there was no computers uh, when they were growing up, so it's completely a foreign thing. So to, to ask a group of parents, how many of you looked at your child's Facebook page or MySpace page today, less than half have even said that. And a lot can happen in a day. The change in a day to a page or number of friends has been added can be unbelievable, depending on how active the child is. So, yeah, that that can be a real problem. And the parents just have to be parents, and it's easier said than done sometimes. But the parents are doing a good job, uh, for the most part, protecting their kids. And that's really where we're getting a lot of tips are from parents monitoring their child's uh, technology, whether it be their phones, whether it be um, their their internet traffic, uh, their their web browsing, any of that stuff, and. I mean, let's face it. There's, there's a, a people by now know that if you throw a snowball at a moving vehicle, that it's a felony. You're throwing a missile at an occupied vehicle. Yeah, two James Madison University students found that out the hard way when they threw one at a city snowplow and an unmarked police car. They're, they're, they got charged with two felonies. Exactly. Well, you know, taking some of the pictures and and doing some of the the activity that some of these kids are doing on. We mentioned it at the break, the YouTube thing, and and some of that stuff. Some of that is felonious, you know. To take a a, a picture of a child, even if it's a, a by a, of another child by by a child, uh, and and having that that child undressed is a felony, and uh, it's it's tragic, but it happens. Now, how where's somewhere or something that parents can do to find out more information? To have them better prepared. Well, we're very blessed in Virginia to have a, have the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children in Alexandria. Um, obviously, missingkids.org is their site, and uh, you can uh, you know if you had any, they got hundreds and hundreds of links for good information from kids of all ages, from the the tweens, the ones that are between middle school and and the elementary age, and even even younger ones than that. I mean. Kids are using computers in kindergarten now, and that's hard to even fathom, but they are. So there's eight- and nine-year-old kids that are farther ahead than their grandparents are knowing what the Internet and the computers are about. And we didn't even touch on sexting. That's a That's been a big problem as well. Mark Quince with the Virginia State Police. Maybe we'll have you back on in a future time. We'll talk about that as well. He is a special agent in the Bureau of Criminal Investigations, High Tech Crime Division. Maybe when the snow melts, uh, we'll, we'll gotta hit a few on the golf course. I'd like that, too. All right. Stay tuned. Tomorrow we'll have Megan Carey, Nashville recording artist from Shenandoah County. Again, log on to the River953online.com to hear this program again. Stay tuned. ABC News is next.